Last week, I went to AWE 2025, which is one of the largest VR conferences in the world. And while I was there, I decided I would become the glove guy and try all of the VR gloves that the vendors had to offer. Some of you may know from my last video that I have a pair of Diver X contact gloves too, and I love them. I'm not using them right now because I'm loaning them to a friend. Give me those back, please. But generally, if you see me in VR chat or social VR, I'll be using them. And I love them. As headset resolutions get higher and higher, and we generally have enough compute to deal with it, I believe that the next challenge that VR hardware manufacturers have to deal with is input method. Most enthusiasts, or at least VR chat enthusiasts, would agree that one of the best controllers for social VR ever made are the Valve Index controllers. But what happens when they stop making them? I don't know about you, but I will not be using the Quest controllers. So, VR gloves and alternative input methods come in. In this video, I'll be giving my thoughts um, mainly on the UDCAP gloves by Udex Real, and then at the end I have a couple of thoughts on the Stretch Sense gloves as well. I'll start by talking about the specifications of the gloves, and then move into my personal experience demoing them and then talking with the Udex Real team. So let's start with Udex Real as a company. Udex Real is a technology startup based in China um, that has so far released the UDCAP gloves via crowdfunding. So far, that is their only released product, but the PR team did say that they have interest in creating more uh, VR hardware and wearables, uh, whether that's full body tracking or other accessories. The UDCAP gloves, um, their tagline is silk-like VR gloves, and they are the primary competitor, both in terms of cost and features, to the contact gloves by Dibrex. The difference, though, is unlike the contact gloves, which use flex sensors, the UDCAP gloves uh, use elastic sensors, proprietary elastic sensors that are um, inside of the fabric of the gloves themselves. They also have a small input module uh, with a joystick and some buttons on each index finger and um, haptic motor, as well as the battery on the rear of the glove. So I wish I had much more time than I did to demo these gloves, but from what I saw, um, they were great. I'll start with the build quality of the gloves themselves. So unfortunately, they are not fingerless gloves. That's the biggest downside. However, I did find the fit to be the best fitting VR gloves that I have used so far. And part of that is due to the material and part of that is due to how you can adjust the gloves. So the material is a semi-stretchy sort of athletic fabric. It's a little bit stretchy, but it's more like an athletic t-shirt, um, a little bit thicker than like leggings. Um, but you know, generally lighter than the pleather-like material of the contact gloves. There are some like tactile, I don't know if it's like rubber or what, um, on the fingertips, so you can grab things without it being slippery. But yeah, they fit well because they're ha they have a little bit of elasticity to them, but more importantly, they have multiple points of adjustment. If you think of most winter gloves or the Diver X glove, they have one point of adjustment at the wrist. So you put the glove on and then you take the strap and you tighten it to get the best fit you can. The downside of having this one point of adjustment is what happens if you have thinner or narrower hands? Well, this whole palm area a lot of times gets baggy. That's what I experience with my contact gloves. Although they have a great fit in the fingertips and at the wrist, the, this area, the palm area is just way too baggy for me to get an accurate fit and therefore get the most accurate tracking. What the UD cap gloves have done is yes, they have this point of adjustment at the wrist, but they also have a strap that goes across the palm. It's optional, but you can cinch it tighter just like you can the wrist. Um, and it also provides additional stability to the rear module, which is where a lot of the weight will be on the glove. If you've ever worn a wrist brace, it's kind of a similar idea. You have multiple points of adjustment. 
And this is a design feature that I think that all people making VR gloves should take into account. You are never going to be able to make one, two, even three different sizes of gloves that fit your entire audience. There's simply too many variables, hand length, hand width, finger length, finger splay, finger width. But by introducing multiple points of adjustment where people can make it fit them, you can get away with having fewer sizes and you can get away with that fit being more individualized for everybody. And when it fits better, again, the tracking quality is higher. So let's talk a little bit about the tracking quality on the UDCAP gloves. Straight up, they are the most accurate glove tracking I've ever experienced. I still had some issues with the splay on the index finger, which is kind of a common theme across all gloves I've tried. They can't seem to get that index finger right. That being said, it was definitely the most responsive um, to minute movements. Um, and also it's the most customizable. Still not on par with the optical hand tracking of something like the Quest 3, but once again, it's a glove. You get infinite range. It'll track if it's behind you. It'll track wherever. So most accurate glove I've tried so far. The controller module, on the other hand, was not my favorite. I think it's a cool idea to try and make the least invasive controller module possible. I mean, it's tiny, right? It's literally just a joystick and two buttons, and it sits on your index finger, you know? But that's just it. It's only a joystick and two buttons. There is kind of a limit to having that few buttons and it's, it's less adaptable to the types of VR content that are out there, it's harder to game with. And then it can be kind of clunky, especially if you're trying to do the chords, right? If you wanna hit the home button on those gloves, you have to hit both buttons at once, which sometimes is just really challenging. That being said, they kind of make up for it with the simulated input. There's no physical trigger button, but because the finger tracking is so accurate, I was able to art activate the trigger, the simulated trigger, 100% of the time with no issues. It was very responsive. Um, and it's also customizable thresholds. You can configure at exactly what threshold you want that trigger to trigger, um, which is really great. Definitely could get away with that input method in social VR, but in something like Half-Life Alex, I was struggling a little bit, especially because um, having the joystick fixed to your finger was a little tough. In an ideal world, I would love to have multiple input methods I can swap between. There are some instances where I might prefer that finger-mounted joystick and finger-mounted buttons on the UDCAP controller. There are some instances where I might wanna use full hand track, and there are some instances where I might want a really robust controller module like the Magnetra 2 has on the contact gloves. The haptics were fine. Um, I didn't get the opportunity to play around or experiment with them that much. Um, so I don't know if they're customizable or if you can change the strength or what. So I can't comment on that. The last hardware thing that I want to talk about is the rear module. So the rear module is where you attach the tracker. It's also where the finger controller module actually plugs in. I have two thoughts on this. One, the actual cord from the controller module all the way to the rear module is very bulky. It does get in the way. Um, I feel like there's an opportunity for better cable management there. I don't know if it needs to be routed through the glove or if there needs to be clips or what, but in its current iteration, it just kind of feels like an afterthought. It's just there and it was getting in the way of my experience. For the contact glove, the way that you attract trackers is a pain in the butt. You have to disassemble the whole thing and screw the tracker on and then reassemble it. But these ones, you just clip it on with the adapter. And don't get me wrong, it's great that it's clip on, but I was worried it was gonna fall off. I would much prefer having that additional assembly and knowing that it's gonna be secure and screw on versus having something that's plastic and is gonna clip and might even, um, degrade over time, uh, I would be really worried that I'm going to do a harsh movement and then my tracker is going to fly off my glove and go across the room. So I haven't stress tested that, but that's my primary concern about, you know, how they're attached. I would love to see a screw on option or maybe just a more durable clip or something that slides in, something that I know I can rely on.
And lastly, I'll share something specific to my experience at the expo, um, and that is just how phenomenal the UDCAP and UDX Real team was to talk to. First of all, they were willing to give anybody a demo. It wasn't just for creators or just for well-known YouTubers or anything. Um, they were willing to let anybody try their gloves and then talk deeply about how they worked and what their role in the production or in the public relations was, which is great. I spoke for a long time with the PR team and the Udex Real team is some of the most highly passionate, highly informed um, members of the VR community or, that I've ever met. They're all, all users of their technology, which is great. They all have personal experiences with the technology um, and with competitor technology um, are prevalent in like the VR community and were able to answer a lot of the really complex questions that I threw at them, uh, both about the gloves themselves, but also uh, UDCAP and UDX Real strategy as a company. So if you're on the UDCAP team and you're watching this, uh, first of all, hi. <laughs> Second of all, thank you for being so invested and passionate and the, in the technology and for making me and other people feel welcome and being so willing to share what you're working on with us. This video is not sponsored by Udex Real. I just wanted to share my experience because again, it was a positive one and I love supporting great work. The summary of the Stretch Sense gloves is I went to the booth for a demo um, but I didn't get to personally try them. The demo was the representative at Stretch Sense just holding the gloves and waving his hands and I got to see how the tracking functioned. The Stretch Sense gloves are out and I believe they actually are cheaper than the Diver X and the UDCAP gloves, um, but they are at this time missing some features. The representative said that um, Splay is not currently enabled in the gloves, but they'll be releasing it from a software side soon. So I would just monitor that before you buy the gloves. Uh, make sure that the whatever features you're looking for are actually out. Um, he was demoing it with a VR headset, um, but I don't know what sort of input module he was using because they don't come with one. I think he was just using like hand tracking input or whatever. One really interesting thing though that I would like to highlight about the Stretch Sense gloves is they do have IMUs, uh, inertial measurement units, built into the gloves, which means they know their rotation. This is cool because it gives you the option to wear the tracker on your wrist instead of on the back of your hand, which kind of, you know, lightens the weight of your hand a little bit, but you'll still get accurate rotation because it's able to calculate that wrist rotation from the IMU and then offset it from, you know, wherever your wrist position is and whatnot. Again, I'm not sure if the intention is to use them as VTubing gloves or VR gloves or whatever, um, but I get the impression that Stretch Sense as a company is a little bit less invested in VR than they are in virtual production. I did try the other gloves at AWE, but they were mostly professional, medical, or training focused. Therefore, I'm not gonna talk about them in this video, but if you want to see all the vendors that were there, you can go to the website and then you can see everybody who was there. So that is the state of gloves in VR from my perspective. Having owned the contact gloves, having had a phenomenal experience with the UDCAP gloves at AWE, I hope that sharing my insights with you and hopefully with glove manufacturers um, is insightful into what we as VR enthusiasts want and benefit from. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this whole thing. Um, I'm pretty active about answering questions, so if you have questions about the gloves or about any of my other experience at the conference, feel free to ask. Other than that, I hope you found this insightful. I will see you in the next video in two weeks to four months. <laughs>